Okay, so now we're going to talk about tab seven. And tab seven are arithmetic and geometric sequences. So we're going to go to tab seven. And let's do arithmetic sequences first. So when we do arithmetic sequences, that's when you're adding the same thing over and over and over. So it's when you add the same value over and over. If you multiply the same value over and over, then it's geometric sequence. But this is, we're gonna start with arithmetic sequences. So <clears throat> there are two formulas that you wanna know. One is called the recursive formula. And the recursive formula, it's pretty much just the previous term plus the common difference. So whatever number you're gonna look at, so a of n, whatever number you wanna look at, you look at the previous term, which is a of n minus one, and you add in whatever that common difference was. Um, so it's the previous term plus the common difference. Now, if it's going down over and over, your common difference is a negative number. Okay, so um, a lot of times they'll also tell you what a of one is in that so that it has some kind of meaning almost. Okay, now the explicit formula, that's the one that's great. The explicit formula is the one where like if you had a bunch of numbers in a sequence and then you want to know what's the hundredth number, you don't have to add a number a hundred times to get it. So the explicit formula is the one that's really, really, really the most useful. And it says that whatever number you're wanting to look at, you start with the first number, and then you add, and you do the quantity of n minus one, so whatever number you wanted to find, minus one, times that common difference. So this is the first term, and then this again is the common difference. Some people like to put the d in the front because they like to distribute more forward than backwards, but it doesn't matter, it's the same thing. So an example, an example would be like 5, 9, 13, 17, 21. So what'd you do to get to, from 5 to get to 9? You add 4. And 9 to 13, you add 4. And 13 to 17, you add 4, etc. So you're adding 4 every time. So that makes your common difference 4. And then you also want to figure out, okay, well, the first term was 5. So A of 1 is 5. So that's pretty much all you need to know. So if I wanted to do the recursive formula for that sequence, all I do is say a of n equals a of n minus one, and then I just say plus five. So all you're doing is adding in what that common difference is. So plus five. And then again, usually you'll say, well, oh, excuse me, that's wrong, plus four. Sorry, the common difference was four then usually you say also a of one is five. Excuse me. All you're doing is filling in the common difference. Okay, the explicit is a of n equals that first term, which is five, plus n minus one times the common difference of four. So that would be an explicit formula. Sometimes people like to go ahead and distribute and you get five plus four n minus four, and a of n equals four n, and five and negative four gives you one. So both of these would work if I wanted to find a number. So like say I wanted to find the, I don't know, the 21st term. So I, what if I wanna know what's a of 21? So if I wanna know the 21st term, I could go here and I could just keep adding four over and over and over to get the 21st term but it's easier to either plug it in here or here. So if I plug it in here, 20, so I want a of 21 is five plus 21 minus one times four. So five plus 21 minus one is 20, and 20 times four is 80, so that makes 85 is my 21st term. If I did it here, uh, I put in 21, I would say 21 times four is 84 plus one, I would still get 85, so that works. Now, if I wanted to graph this sequence, what I would graph is 
if I was going to graph it, my graph would be, since the first number is 5, it's 1 comma 5. The second number is 9, it's 2 comma 9. The third number is 13, etc. And the graph of this will be a diagonal, dot, 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 a diagonal line because it's always going to have a slope and it's always going to increase every time because that common difference being 4. All right, geometric sequences is when you multiply over and over by something. So you multiply by the same value over and over. And if you're going to divide by the same value and over and over, then instead just multiply by that reciprocal. So like if you're going to divide by 3 over and over, just times by a third, times by a third, times by a third. So again, the recursive formula is still the previous term, so the previous term, which is a of n minus 1, but now you're timesing by a value over and over. So instead of plus d, which was adding the common difference over and over, you're timesing by r, which is, they call that, the common ratio. Okay, and then in the explicit formula, Again, it's the nth term, and it's, again, the first term, and it's times whatever that common ratio to the power of n minus 1. And this is the first term. And again, r is still the common ratio. Okay, and n is whatever term you're going to look at. So an example of that would be like, say I had 3, 12... 48192. So what I do to 3 to get to 12, I times by 4. And there to there, I times by 4. And there to there, I times by 4, etc. So that makes the common ratio 4. And then again, what you care about is what's the first term. And a of 1, in this case, is 3. So if I was going to do the recursive formula for this sequence, then it's just a of n equals the previous term times that common ratio of 4. And sometimes people like to put the 4 in the front, and then they would just say 4. A, then minus 1, like that. So either way. Um, and then the explicit is A of n equals, and it's the first term, which is 3, times 4 to the n minus 1 power. Now, if you were going to graph that, it's going to be a graph that's a curve that's exponential because the variable is in the exponent. So there's two kinds. There's exponential growth and exponential decay. So let's talk about exponential functions, which is what these are. Up here, these were linear functions. These are exponential functions. And in exponential functions... It's a, y equals a times b to the x, where this is the initial value, and this is the growth factor. So if b is greater than 1, it's growth, and it's rising, going fast, up. If b is between 0 and 1, it's exponential decay, and it's getting smaller and smaller. So like this might be the value of a car, um, something like that. So this is might be you telling two people a secret, and those two people telling two people that secret, and those two people of each of those two people telling a secret. So it gets bigger and bigger fast, fast, fast. So that's exponential growth. Now remember, though, it's a little bit different than these, because in this one, this is the first term, because this is to the n minus 1, or the x minus 1. But in this one, it's only to the x, or you could use the letter n, whatever. But um, since it's not minus 1, this is not the first term. This is like the zeroth term. This is the initial value. This is the y-intercept. So you see the difference. There is a difference in these. So exponential growth looks like this. And exponential decay 
looks like this. So in this one, it's still y equals a times b to the x, but the b value is bigger than one. So it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. In this one, it's still y equals a times b to the x, and the b is less than one. So the b is between zero and one, and it's getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So I hope that helps.